you also are a writer for the Pro Football Network, and there's some inside inside information that you and the boys over at PFN know and have dug up, and I can't wait to hear what you're going to share with us, my friend. Yeah, so uh, Tony Pauline last night, he does a show with uh, Trey Wingo, who we got uh, a couple of weeks back, maybe a month back. Huge, huge get for PFN there, obviously, with his you know history in the draft and and in you know coverage in, in sports media. But uh, they were on last night, and Tony Pauline came out with some insider information, apparently, about uh, the the way that the Cowboys are looking at the 10th pick. He said that if Penny Sewell were to drop, that would be the pick. So I think when we look at it, there is a hard floor for Penny Sewell at pick 10. Um, they want to be able to protect Dak Prescott. They just invested, obviously, a, a ton of money into him. Um, I don't think that it's the absolutely necessary pick, but you know he is... You know, my my fourth ranked overall player, my third ranked overall player, um, and so when you can get that at ten at a position that is a need because Tyron Smith is not going to remain healthy for very very long, he's not going to be around for sixteen games, um, and at the end of the day, I don't think he has that many years on his career left. So when you can get a a twenty year old uh, to come in who was elite in the Pac twelve at seventeen, I, I think that that's always a, a good. Uh, Good opportunity. You also have, you know, he said, Tony Pauline, that is, uh, said that if it's not them, it's if it's not Penny so it's going to be one of the two corners, Patrick Sertan or J.C. Horn. But he came up with a little nugget and said that the Cowboys are, he's being told that the Cowboys are interested in a trade back. So, Captain Trade Down, Jeff Cavanaugh, um, you know, something that we do on this station here, um, I think that the Cowboys have really taken into account is we bullied them. At this point, they're they're finally addressing one technique. They're finally trying to, or it seems that they're trying to address free safety. And, you know, maybe now they're trying to trade down. Um, Tony Pauline said if they do trade down, there's two names that he's really circling. One of them is Christian Derisaw, the offensive tackle from Virginia Tech, who I personally have as my second-ranked offensive tackle ahead of of Slater, Rashawn Slater from Northwestern. I think that the upside with with him is ridiculous. He's a, a freak athlete for the position. He, he's well built. He's long. Um, he just needs uh, to always be there. Um, there are times where he gets uh, maybe a little bit lazy, a little bit. Uh, you know, he'll, he'll take not a playoff, but when the play is not immediately on him, he might not be going 100. percent Oh, Randy Moss. Yeah, so, um, and, and the other one that I wanted to bring up really quick was Zayvon Collins, uh, the, the linebacker from Tulsa. And, and the interesting thing that I thought that Tony Pauline said was they would kind of use him as a designated pass rusher type. Um, I, I think that that probably means as a Sam linebacker who they bring down on the edge in an under front and, and really look to, you know, jam tight ends, you know, carry backs out of the backfield and rush the passer alongside Demarcus Lawrence and Randy Gregory. Um, I think that that's where his body kind of fits. He's a he's a linebacker, but he's really built like an edge rusher. He's long. Um, he's you know really tall for a linebacker. Like when you watch him at Tulsa in that tape, he looks like that eighth grader that hit puberty way before everybody else. That's what he looks like on Division One college football field. Um, and I think that as you know a designated pass rusher, um, that, that's a good pick. Also, he's got great ball production and coverage. I actually think him and Jameen Davis are the best linebackers in this draft class. Move over Micah Parsons. Uh, I think those two are better all-around football players. I do want to go back to Derrishaw real quick here, Dalton, because you know the one thing we've heard about Slater is he could start immediately and kick into guard. Would Derrishaw or Derrishaw be that same kind of guy that you could start at left guard, or is he just going to have to be a backup until? eventually Tyron leaves or, you know, there's injury issues with him or LC. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing, like with Slater um, and with a couple of other guys in this draft class as well at offensive tackle, they have history at guard and you don't have that with Darisol. Now Darisol's game, his power, um, his, you know, ability to really scrum it up is something that could work on the interior, but I haven't seen it yet. And for me, those are different positions. You have to do different things when you're playing guard from tackle. Um, and he doesn't have that skill set right now because he's just never played the position. 
it would be a little bit of a learning curve, I think. I think that he could do it physically, um, but I don't know if it's necessary. And with that, it does make that pick a little bit weird because he won't be playing um, in year one outside of, you know, maybe three games, maybe eight games, maybe all 16. And you, you don't really know, but um, you don't plan on him being the starter. Well, can you draft some? Like, that's the thing, you know, if, if you're going to draft somebody the first round, aren't you. Re- like relying on them to be an impact player day one? You would like to, yes. Yes, you would like to have an instant an instant contributor with your first round guys. The issue, and I think what makes it a little bit unique with the Cowboys is with the injury last year uh, to Lyle Collins um, and the, you know, kind of you know rumors or whatever it may be surrounding that injury and why that may have happened and, you know, possibly being out of shape coming into camp. Um, and that may be contributing to it. And then on top of that, you also have Tyron Smith's health ish- history. So they may be just thinking like, hey, like we're probably going to be down one offensive tackle at one point. We saw what happened when we lost both of our guys last year. Um, they might just be so against, you know, having that happen again that they're going to take a guy that won't contribute right away. Interesting. Now, so- okay. Sewell's a guy that can that can play some guard though, right? Yes, yes. He, I mean, he he didn't in uh, he didn't at Oregon, but he was actually a guard coming out of high school. He was a guard prospect or a guard recruit coming out of there, and then moved to left tackle and was just all world all of a sudden. I mean, he's a crazy story, man. It's interesting with Sewell. If, if Cincinnati doesn't take him, it it's possible that he could slide to ten. You know, Carolina maybe would be the other team at eight that would consider it. But as we get closer to the draft, for some reason, my gut is it, my, my gut's rumbling a little bit, and I think Panay Sewell at ten might not be out of the realm of possibility for the Cowboys, depending on what Cincy does there at five. I mean, he very well could be, and I mean, I think that it would be ridiculous, obviously, for Cincinnati to to pass on him, even for a guy like Jamar Chase, because you need to protect your quarterback that is coming off of an ACL tear. You have to do whatever you can to protect your young quarterbacks. That's why uh, the, the Chargers need to go with an offensive tackle as well. Um, that's the most important thing that you can do outside of you know any weapons that you can get um, is to be able to protect those guys and be able to let them stand in the pocket and learn um, and grow as they go. Um, yeah, man, and, and you know with Carolina, with with them, you know going. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that they kind of have to go with offensive tackle at this point. They were, you know, forever going to be a quarterback team. Um, and that doesn't seem to be the case now. So, I mean, I, I think that they need to go with, with Penny Sewell if he's there. But if they don't, if they end up going corner, if they go Patrick Sertan, then, you know, Penny Sewell's sitting right there in our laps and uh, we uh, kind of win the first round at, at that point.